In this workshop, you're going to hear from Gitkrak and power users and pick up some tips and tricks that maybe you weren't aware of. The speaker for this workshop is Kevin Bost. He is a senior software architect and a long-term Gitkrak and desktop user, uh, also a Gitkrak and ambassador. So he's a great wealth of knowledge. Um, he's going to show you all sorts of things that you probably weren't aware of. Uh, so stay tuned. My name is Kevin Bost. I am a senior software architect with IntelliTech here in Spokane, Washington. I'm a Git Kraken ambassador, Microsoft MVP. I've been using the tool for years and absolutely love it. Um, you can find me online streaming on Twitch and YouTube, and people who tune into my streams will know that I spend a lot of time uh, doing things with Git Kraken uh, because I absolutely love it. So today it's going to be a little bit of tips and tricks, things that I enjoy doing, kind of hidden features that sometimes things uh, that are not always obvious to everybody. Um, and so we will dive in. Feel free to uh, drop uh, questions in the chat as we go. Like Ken said, uh, we may take a few of them kind of in line as they come up or we can hit stuff up at the end, but we will dive in. So here I have my Git Kraken desktop fired up and just for posterity's sake, I am running 10.2.0. So if you're catching the recording of this, that's the version that I'm on. Uh, things happen rapidly. Stuff gets fixed. Things get improved very quickly. So just be aware if you're watching this in the future, things might have uh, been a little different than what you've seen. Um, I've got uh, a workspace open here with a bunch of VeloPack repositories. This is an organization I'm a part of. It's an installer technology, but the repo doesn't matter that much. Um, in this case, uh, one of the things that often comes up is I will get quite a few repository tabs open. And sometimes, depending on what provider you're using for your repositories, it's very common to maybe have like multiple docs repositories or things that have similar names. And you often don't have control of the names of the repositories, but you do have control of the names of these tabs. So if you right click on the tab and go down here, you can end up hitting alias repository, and then you can give it whatever name you would like. So if I wanna say, this is gonna be my info repository. You can actually dial down those names. And this can be quite helpful, especially like I said, when you've got multiple repositories that maybe have same or similar names and you wanna be able to disambiguate them for uh, when you are uh, diving through those. The other one, and this is potentially one that I absolutely love the most, I've got a branch out here. So this is hosted on GitHub. Dependabot has flagged that there's a, an update to a NuGet package to fix a CVE. So I've got a branch out here ready to go with the, the NuGet package update. So I've already done the commit, done the push. Now it's time to open up the pull request. Uh, there's several interactions and ways to do this, but by far my favorite one is just click, drag, drop. And then at the very bottom down here, you end up seeing start a pull request. And the key thing to validate is just to make sure that the branches do match because it is uh, the pull request is opened in the direction from the branch that you drag to the branch that you drop onto. So in this case, it is going from my CV branch onto develop. We can start the pull request. We see this dialog here opens and it automatically populates the, the from and to repositories. Typically, these are going to match unless you're doing like open source with multiple forks. Um, and then you see the branches and then you can fill out your description and then simply open the pull request and you're off to the races. If you want to, you can always dive out to the uh, open on GitHub. If you need to go through, add some additional stuff, uh, there's some sort of GitOps or whatever that you are doing. Um, but now you're off to the races and you've got your pull request open. This is by far one of my favorite things. One of the other ones, and this even just hit me yesterday, is being able to search the commit graph. The the graph here in the middle is, I think, one of the most useful features of Git Kraken, uh, just being able to visualize the relationships between commits, branches, and all of that stuff. But with that, there's oftentimes a lot of data in there, and needing to be able to search and find what you're looking for happens quite a bit. So even just being able to uh, dive in and, and be able to find things by author is quite handy. So if you right-click on this header, you'll note that there are several columns in here that can be enabled. So I'll just click them all on so that we can see them for the moment. Uh, we've got our, our commit date, we've got our hashes, we've got our authors, and you'll note in all of these headers, uh, one of these columns is special. The author column has this little filter button on it that does not exist on the other ones. And this can be rather handy because I can come in here and say, okay, let's go through and let's find all of the ones that are done by me. 
And unfortunately, I've apparently committed as multiple users, which makes this even more fun. But you can see here that once I filter down by myself, my commits now are, uh, we'll say, a, uh, a lighter white or everyone else is faded out a little bit more so that I can kind of scroll through here and quickly find the stuff that uh, uh, that is that is tied in uh, to myself and be able to find that. Um, I did see a question in the chat about using that uh, pull request template. Yes, there is a, on this dialogue here, if you have a template involved and I'm looking for the dropdown, it may just be an artifact of the fact that mine isn't here. There is often a dropdown for the pull request template, specifically, I believe for DevOps. This repository in question doesn't have um, PR template set up on it. So I, I don't think I'm expected to see it showing up here. Um, but I but I do know that there is a drop down at least on the uh, Azure DevOps provider. That is one of the interesting things too that happens with a lot of these Git interactions. The features that light up are really tied to whatever provider you actually are using because not all of them are the exact same. Yeah, no problem, James. Okay, carrying right along. Um, the other thing, kind of working with this, and I'm going to clear my filter here so that I can get this thing to stop. Uh, highlighting these and I'm going to turn some some of these back off. I this is the way I like to run my customize it to your uh, uh, fit. Yeah, is it possible to filter by free text? Um, there is a uh, if you open up. So there's this command palette or control P. Um, I think it's command P if you are on a Mac. Um, this guy here, if you're just looking to straight search commits, this is kind of the way that you would be able to kind of freeform text search it. So if you want to hunt by message, Shaw, author, et cetera, this is the, the searching. So it's not, it's not quite the same interaction um, because this is legitimately just trying to search to find a thing. So it's not going to give you that highlighting uh, approach, but it does give you a way of saying, hey, let's, um, let's go through and do this. Yeah, uh, the icons thing. Uh, double check there. Is, so, uh, feedback.getkraken.com, or there is a uh, browser submit feature request underneath the help menu. I think there might be. I think there might be one out there as well to be able to do this. Uh, oh, and then the the question of being able to to do it with Control F. Yes, yes, Timo. Yes, Control F does give you a one here. I will point out this is. Uh, somewhat similar in terms of like if we do Node.js, right? You you do get that highlight approach to be able to jump between them like this. Yes, absolutely. So multiple ways to effectively search your commits depending on kind of what you're looking to get and uh, be able to pull out of there. The other one, and especially because I work in several repositories that are mono repos. So there are 30, 40 people contributing to these things. Um, and the graph starts to get quite wide. Um, people are making branches, pull requests, things are moving along at a nice clip. Um, but that gets to be very noisy as well. One of the other things that I enjoy doing is going through and leveraging, um, uh, filtering out the branches. So. With Git, you can name your branches with slashes in them, and most tools interpret slashes in the branch names as a hierarchy. So for example, my branch here, um, KB are my initials, and I just did a forward slash for my branch name. Git Kraken, like most tools, interprets that slash as, okay, I, I understand you mean a hierarchy. And the advantage of this is now I can go through and say, you know what, maybe I, I want to just hide all of the branches under this folder, really all of them, this prefix is what it boils down to. Um, and that way I can just filter out the stuff that I don't want to see. Sometimes you actually want to go the other direction though, rather than filtering out, you want to kind of filter in and say, these are the branches that I actually care to look at, not these are the ones I don't want to see. So the inverse of the problem is when you right click on one of these guys, there is a solo branch option down here. And as soon as you turn on soloing for one branch, you'll note you get these little orange icons floating on the right over here. And this allows you to then, just like we had the eyeball before, we can now start just bringing in the branches that we care about so that those are the only ones that show up. So we can say, okay, these are the ones that I want to focus on. These are the ones that, you know, maybe is my team or my prefix, right? I, I only want to see the ones that are underneath, you know, um, my name or one of my teammates' names that I'm going for. 
Um, yeah, so the question there, can I hide multiple branches at the root level? Uh, you absolutely can. So there, if we're talking about like at the root level, so if I kind of collapse these ones up where we have like master and develop here, for example, you do end up having to hide them one at a time each click. But then, yes, absolutely, those can go through and do. You'll also note that I am doing this under the remote section. So on your commit graph, depending on whether you see the little uh, computer logo or the, in this case, the organization logo from GitHub, uh, this is only hiding those Git references that are coming in from the remote. So there, there is a little bit of a difference here. So I still have my, my local develop um, reference is still here. So if I, if I look up here, I do have my local uh, dev, but I can do the same thing on local. If I say, you know what, I don't want to see develop at all. Or, you know what, master is one of those special branches. We're doing Git flow. I'm, I'm never branching off this. I don't really care to see it most of the time. I'm focused on doing my feature branches. You know, if somebody else is dealing with pull requesting back from developing a master, whatever, great. So you can certainly use the same filter out approach uh, as well. Uh, so, and then is the hierarchy naming using only forward slash or also using hyphen? Just the forward slash is what it's going to come down to. And I think I might even have a sample. Like you can see this node lib branch here. Uh, there is a uh, kind of small, uh, there is a little hyphen kind of hiding out in the name. And that one there is considered part of the, the name, not necessarily the hierarchy. It really is just the slashes. And again, branches don't really have a concept of hierarchy. It's just that most tools have chosen to interpret the slash as a hierarchy. So oftentimes when people are doing uh, naming schemes for the branches, they start to include that kind of information and saying, hey, you know, if you have a slash, this is actually helpful. Um, yeah, any way to clean up local branches once merged and deleted via the, the PR window? Uh, that very much depends on your... Uh, your integration. So some like GitHub and Azure DevOps, the two I'm most familiar with, they do have their autocomplete feature, which will delete the branch. If you're talking about cleaning up your local ref, um, nothing beyond just manually right clicking and, and deleting the local refs. It, at times it would be nice. Um, and you'll find scripts online where people have written things to basically rip through their, their local Git branches and say, Hey, if the, if the remote ref is gone, yeah, just torch it. Um, you got to be a little careful with that because there are times where you're working on a local branch, there is no remote ref. And so you, you kind of want to, you almost want to be able to have that state transition of, hey, when is the remote ref deleting and going back? Um, but there's not necessarily an automated uh, process in there for you. Um, okay, last thing I want to kind of point out is you can see I've got a bunch of options sitting over here um, in terms of these sidebar sections. This is also customizable. Um, if you just right click on the header, you can actually come down here and say, hey, you know, I want to see submodules. Well, in this case, this repository doesn't have any submodules. So it's like, why would I need that? Turn that off. Maybe you aren't using um, the pull requests or the, the issue section. That's fine. If that's not something that fits into your workflow, go ahead and gain yourself back a little real estate and then be able to pull it back. Uh, is there a shortcut for the keyboard to be able to uh, delete a local branch? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, not that I am aware of. Uh, and I think some of it may come around to focus, but I, I am not aware of a keyboard shortcut. Yeah, and... Yeah, that uh, little snippet in the chat from Mark, uh, or Mark quoting James, I guess, is the better one. Um, that kind of handy Git alias for doing that cleanup, that is absolutely correct. Yeah, uh, that that's the sort of thing I've seen people start to kind of build out uh, to be able to go through and do, which makes sense. I've run similar things in the past as well, because it is, it is easy to quickly let this thing get out of hand. Um, I also personally like naming branches with author being the first section of the slash because quite often that's the thing that's most important to me is being able to di dial it down sometimes people do team slash author slash you know insert issue number whatever it's going to be great um either way uh it it certainly works and that's usually up to um uh, a team uh let's see how would you delete something that has already been pushed yeah so the if for example we wanted to get rid of this commit 
um, the, the the deletion of the branch is fairly easy. If it's if it's already been pushed and it's just the branch you want deleted, right clicking on the branch over on the left side, and then there's a simple uh, delete option here to be able to delete the branch. If you're talking about deleting a commit, um, there's not really a concept of delete commit as much as change the branch pointer. So rather than having to point at the latest commit, simply back, uh, backing the branch up with like a uh, git revert hard and then pushing that, or I guess force pushing because you are rewriting history, that effectively uh, deletes it uh, from say a, a branch with a pull request or similar. Um, deletion is actually a fun thing to dive into. Don't necessarily have anything prepped here for it, but there's, depending on a lot of kind of different factors of, has it been pushed? Uh, is it your latest commit? Kind of the flow that you might go through on fixing it kind of changes, but there are some some fun ones. And if people are interested in something like that, let me know that that can make for a fun workshop of going through and doing it. Cause there are different things with either uh, reset, revert, squash, or similar to be able to kind of uh, move that data around. Um, and yeah, uh, definitely submit that feedback for icons on the context menu. Um, the context menu is certainly getting longer. It, it's one of those, I remember back when it, when things were shorter and it is uh, very, uh, interesting. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, Ken, take a note. I'm interested in doing another workshop on, uh, we'll call it deletion of stuff or reverting or similar. So we can, we can go through and do it. Um, okay. So I want to jump over here to, to the repository management. This is something that came in new with the, uh, 10.0 release, um, kind of giving you this, uh, broad view of being able to do it. Now, I've gone through, I have made up cloud workspaces, but a lot of this will work the same if you do a local workspace. So uh, the workspace feature, new workspace, name, color, description, teams, all that, all that kind of jazz um, and local workspaces as well. But this gives you a nice, simple way of being able to manage all of it. So for example, this Velopack org that I'm a part of, I have a workspace, I've got all my stuff in here and I can kind of quickly see this, uh, the state between my local uh, checkouts of each of these and the remotes, kind of figuring out, okay, where where am I at in relation to it? And some of them, I just straight up haven't even cloned down uh, to my repository. The, the big one here is you can select all on these and then you have these group level actions of, hey, let's go ahead and just fetch all six of these repositories. Let's just pull all of these repositories, which can certainly be helpful. Um, I recently uh, moved and so basically took a vacation from coding for a couple of weeks, came back. First thing I wanted to do was, yeah, I'm woefully out of date. It's been two weeks. The amount of stuff that has happened has been a lot. Just get me up to date and being able to go through. Um, so being able to have kind of those group actions of uh, going through and doing it is awesome. And then obviously you can, you can pick if it's like, Hey, you know, I don't want all of these. I don't want to pull these. That's fine. Right. And now what some people may consider the, the least important feature, but I absolutely fell in love with, um, underneath here, there is an option to change the color. And I love this feature so very much. <laughs> so just uh, for, for people who, who care, you can colorize these, you can drag and sort them, put your favorites at the top. You can hide the ones that you aren't interested in having visible all the time, because like me, I work for a, as a consultant in a lot of cases, I sometimes have workspaces for clients. So we'll just go ahead and hide those ones off and keep focused on the ones that are uh, important down here. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so the question there from Tony about uh, naming a branch and getting a branch already exists, there's probably something to look at in terms of uh, check your locals because if you're creating a branch, it's usually going to be a conflict uh, uh, of your local one. The other thing that often bites people is sometimes the subtle differences in casing can be uh, highly problematic. Um, but I would dig through your, your local list. I'm guessing something there is probably uh going to do it um yeah so the the free text search and why is there not one full featured uh at present i think those three searches are the only ones that are there uh as far as what may be coming in the future 
I will punt that to actual get cracking folks. I'm just a user. Um, but yes. Uh, okay. And then one of the other ones. Uh, so I commented earlier, gone on vacation, coming back, wanting to catch up. The, the launch pad is another one of those new features that has been getting lots of updates over the last several versions. I think it also came in in the 10.0 release, if I'm not mistaken. But I think every like 10.1, 10.2 has seen some level of update um, going into this. This has been one of my favorite areas of being able to just dive in and get going because you can tie it into a workspace. So this is going to then search all of the issues across GitHub for the repos in this workspace and give me a list of the various um, issues that are outstanding. And then the amount of time it takes me to go from issue to starting work is create branch. I can see a description of the issue, create a branch, and then it's going to preemptively give me a suggestion for the branch name. I might say, you know what? No, I, I want my, uh, Ken, can you drop my picture out of the way? If you don't mind. Um, I can also move myself. There we go. There we go. Um, when you uh, go through, I might decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to put my KB slash in front of it just so that the branch the, then goes where I want it to. I can say, hey, we're going to base on either my local main or the origin main. Um, just because I don't know if my main is up to date. We'll just grab origin. And then like that, I've got a new branch checked out, moved, and I can start working and I'm off to the races. So the amount of time it takes me to go from uh, issue to, to new branch off to the races is very short. Uh, and I, I absolutely love this. Obviously, GitHub, Azure DevOps have similar things in their web interface, but this keeps me from having to necessarily bounce around from multiple tools and uh, jump through. Uh, can we change the branch name default suggestion? Oh, that is a good question. That is an excellent question. I think the answer is no. But uh, actually, Raymond, I, I might... Let, let me let me double check on that and and get back to you my my suspicion is no but i've got but i've got something in the back of my head that's telling me that that answer is wrong so yeah let, let me take a note and follow up on that um uh, because i am i'm not 100 percent sure on this um yeah and then i like the the comment down there launching vs code from the current tab that is that is a wonderful one so if, underneath the file menu uh, open repo in VS Code uh, or uh, open in terminal or in file manager are absolutely awesome ones. Like the Alt-O options in here, um, these guys here are amazing shortcuts to have, especially if you can be able to dive into it. Um, I know there are feature requests out there for kind of expanding some of these beyond just like VS Code because immediately everybody inserts their favorite IDE of choice in here to be able to go through and do. Um, but oftentimes, at least opening in file manager or terminal, at least gets you one step closer and off to the races. So, uh, yeah, but yes, Raymond, absolutely sounds like a feature request. Let's see, uh, let's grab a few other questions in here. Uh, can I sort the issues by time or item name? Uh, so inside of here, uh, not yet, but I, I know I've seen feature requests come through for being able to do additional sorting and filtering. And the this launchpad view is one that I know has been getting a lot of love. Um, like each update, there's been small incremental improvements to it. So I would expect uh, more things coming in this area because it, it constantly gets better. Uh, let's see. Are there any integrations for other project management services, Jiro, uh, Asana? Um, there are other integrations available. Um, I would probably have to punt exactly on if this list here is complete. Um, but in terms of like Jira, absolutely. Um, and at least the, the Jira cloud and the on-prem data center, um, Asana, I, again, I'll punt that one to a, a get crack in person to actually answer. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and then I think uh, Christian chimed in. Yeah, on the Jira one. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Muhammad, I was working at Detached Head, and by mistake, I lost one of my branches. How can I recover that? Oh, that is a great 
uh, question. Uh, don't necessarily have time to jump into it now, but Google Git Reflog. That is the, the magical thing that will keep track of local commits and it let you recover stuff back. Um, that one will get you off and going. Um, yeah, and then does any part of your workflow include the uh, Git crack and CLI? Uh, it depends. On, on this particular machine, for the work that I'm doing, I often favor Git crack and desktop. The Git crack and CLI absolutely does give you a lot of this kind of same functionality, create branch from issue, being able to query this kind of stuff with the, the workspace and similar. Um, I, I do use it on different machines where maybe Git crack and desktop is less uh, available to me, we'll say. Um, but at least for like in this work for the Velopack org, I'm oftentimes using just uh, Git crack and desktop. It, it's a .NET project, so full Visual Studio, Windows, etc. Um, yeah, and then Ken chimed in for Asana, not currently at this time. Um, yeah, and then where do I find the workshop? So gitkraken.com forward slash workshops, uh, I believe is the URL, and the link is in there as well. So I think I am just about at time, Ken. I've got, a, I think, about 60 seconds left according to my clock, unless something chimes in. But thank you, everyone, for jumping in. I appreciate all the extra uh, feedback from people. Um, always always good to hear. And hopefully there will be more workshops coming in the future. Maybe we'll talk about the uh, how, to, how to fix or delete or undo my mistakes because that's, that's always a fun one to dive into. <laughs>